What's going down guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to connect to a database using PHP and MySQL. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Um, first of all, it's important to note that you won't be able to just view PHP files on your local machine, um, unlike with HTML files for example. In order to view them in your browser, you'll need to have some form of server. Um, and there are two main options for this. You could either use a web host to host your PHP files and make them visible on the World Wide Web, or you could simply install software such as XAMPP, which can be downloaded for free and acts as a local host. I use XAMPP and I would recommend that you use it as well. So let's get started with the tutorial then. As you can see, I've already created an index.php file and I've saved this on my uh, flash drive and I've saved it um, yeah, on my flash drive in the xamp light folder and then in the htdocs so in order to view this web page we need to go to start the application the xamp light application you can minimize that because it successfully um, started then we need to go to htdocs and connecting to a database and you will see that's where my index.php file has been saved okay um, so now we can type in here uh, localhost colon 8666 um, slash connecting uh, and just let me check something actually just let me check the name the file path right yeah so I've, I've used bases um, in between which is a bit silly um, so I'll need to put percent 20 wherever a space is required in the file path so connecting to a database slash index.php and you'll see that uh, the PHP um, file is now displayed in the browser because we are connected to a server. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new database. So I'm going to go to localhost colon 8666 slash php my admin. php my admin, for those of you who don't know, comes free with um, XAMP, which is handy. So to create a new database, we're going to type in this field where it says create new database. Um, we're going to call it my underscore database and then click create. And then we're going to um, create a new table on the database and we're going to give the table the name of um, data and we're going to add two fields to this table click go and okay so the first field um, is going to be called ID um, so it's good to have an ID on your database tables and the second field is going to be called name okay um, so the type for ID needs to be changed to integer and it needs to be given a length value of 11 um, for the name, the type can stay as varchar, and the length value will change to 40. And then for the ID, we need to make sure that it's auto-incremented and a primary key. Okay, so it's the primary key, and it auto-increments a new value when a new record is added to the database table. So now we can go to Insert, and we'll add some dummy records. So I'm going to add in Joe as the first record, and the second record I'm going to add... Jane. don't need to put anything in the ID field because um, when we click save and we go to browse you will see the ID is auto incremented it automatically adds in a new ID value for each new record so we've got ID 1 as Joe ID 2 as Jane those are the two records now we have that we have in our database table so go back to your text editor then as you can see I've already typed up the bare bones of a HTML document so we're going to go into the body tags and we're going to create the PHP tags. Okay, so in here, we're now going to uh, make a connection. So $con equals MySQL connect. And in here, we need three sets of quotes. It's each separated by a comma. The first one is going to be, for me, it's going to be localhost. Um... Then the second one for me is going to be root and then the last one would be where a password to the database um, goes 
but I don't have a password set on mine, so I'm just going to leave that blank. If you don't have a password, you don't have to put a value in there. Um, then we're going to um, make, sorry, we're going to select the database that we want. So dollar DB equals MySQL select DB, and in here, in quotes, uh, we'll just reference that. We need to put in my underscore database or whatever you named your database because it might not be the same as mine my underscore database and that's it that is literally all we need to do to actually make a connection to the database that we've just created that's it but in order to ensure um that we've made a connection and so that you can see for yourselves if you're unsure we can create an, a quick if statement if dollar con um, we want to echo out onto the page um, some text saying successfully connected to the database. Okay. Um, so what that's basically saying is if a connection has been made to localhost root and the password is correct, etc., then it will echo out successfully connected to the database on the page. Then we want to say else we want the script to die and we want the text to be sorry we want some text to be displayed on the page saying error so that you know that there's an error that's been made so that could be with the password um, to the connection or it could be um, any of the other uh, two values that aren't correct or if you've made a typo or something like that it will, it will say error so file, save, and now we can refresh in the browser and in index.php and you will see it now states successfully connected to the database on the web page. So that shows that we have now successfully connected um, and made a connection. Um, so now I'm just going to show you what happens now if something goes wrong. So I'm just going to change localhost to say hello. Okay, file, save. So obviously, um, these these details, these values are wrong. So when we, we so when we now refresh in the browser, you will see it now comes up with an error message, and it also states error. It also displays the text error underneath, which is what we told it to say. Um, so you can see it says unknown MySQL server host. Um, hello, it's unknown. So that's just an example of what could happen. If it's if anything's wrong, so I change that back to localhost, um, and now we're going to add a new if statement, and we're going to say if dollar db. Um, so if the database can be found and it, and can be selected, we want it to echo successfully um, found the database. So if my underscore database um, can successfully be found and connected to, then we want it to display on the page successfully found the database. Else, we want the script to die and we want um, text to be displayed, like an error message to be displayed saying error, database not found. Uh, to inform you that the database cannot be found, so you may have spelt it wrong, typed it in wrong, whatever. But when we file save refresh in the browser, you'll see it now says successfully connected to the database. And then it also says successfully found the database. So that just shows um, that the database can be found. So just as an example of the error message that would be shown if you make a typo or you type um, the name of the database in wrong. So say we type in Tutti Frutti as the database name file, save, and refresh, and you'll now it says, you, you will see that it says error database not found. Okay, because we haven't created a database in PHP my admin um, called Tutti Frutti, so that database cannot be found and it cannot be connected to. Whereas my underscore database can, because we've just created that and that exists. So file, save, refresh, and there we go. So you don't need to display um, a message saying that you've successfully connected to the database. You don't need to display those messages. That's just to show you um, 
that it works and it connects. So now we are going to type some HTML and we're just going to add a couple of line breaks and then we're going to open another set of PHP tags um, because what we're going to do now is we're just going to basically display the information within our database on the web page. So to do that we need to first of all create a new variable called dollar $Query which is equal to MySQL um, MySQL query and within here we need to type in quote a set of quotes and within here we're going to type select everything from data and so basically data that's where your database table name goes so our database table within the database is called data so select everything from data. The everything part of that query, that SQL query, um, is an asterisk or a star. So select star from data. Then we need to create a while loop. So while dollar row equals MySQL fetch array um, dollar query. So <clears throat> the MySQL fetch array needs to be the same variable as the MySQL query variable that we've just created above. And then in here we can put, um, within the while loop, we can put $ID, which is a new variable called $ID, equals $row ID. $name, a new variable called $name, equals $row name. So what that's doing is that's getting the ID field from the database table data and storing it in a variable called id and it's doing the same with name so then within the while loop we can echo out dollar id that space um, dot space and then a bit of html which just basically adds in a colon and a space and then space dot space dollar name space dot space and then we'll add in some HTML, which is just a line break, so that it puts each record on a new line, basically when it's displayed, and not on the same line, because that can be a bit confusing. So file, save, go back to the browser, um, press refresh, and there we go. We've displayed all the records within our database table on the web page. As you can see, Joe and Jane, and their IDs have been now displayed on our web page. So now we're going to add in um, two new records. We're going to add in Harold and Frank, just as an example. Go, and we can now browse, and you can see now that two more records have been added to our database, Harold and Frank. So now when we refresh index.php, as you can see, Harold and Frank are also now displayed on the page. So there you go. It, so we've now retrieved all the data from within our database table that we've just created after making the connection and establishing the connection. And we've displayed all four records. And that's how it's done. And that's how you display records on a web page as well. So that's just about it then for this tutorial, guys. I hope you found it useful. And I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a like if you did enjoy it. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to be notified when I upload new videos in the future. But for now, bye guys.